All right, class, this is a lesson 5.1 for Algebra 1. It's points in a coordinate plane. So lesson 5.1, points in a coordinate plane. All right, should be a pretty quick lesson, so grab your notes and let's get rolling here today. All right, uh, 5.1. So number one, a coordinate plane is also called a Cartesian plane. Cartesian C-A-R-T-E-S-I-A-N. You'll hear me refer to it as a Cartesian plane often. Uh, sometimes I'll call it a rectangular coordinate plane, uh, but Cartesian plane is often uh, the designation for a coordinate plane. All right, the horizontal axis is the x-axis. So if you go down on your graph there and label the red axis, the horizontal axis with an x, and... You know, you're starting um, where the red and the green axis intersect. That's the zero point. So the first line is one, and the second is two, and three, and four. As you go to the right, and as you go to the left, of course, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? All right, the uh, vertical axis is the y-axis. And so the green axis is the y-axis. And just like a vertical number line, up is positive, down is negative. So again, where they cross is zero. So the first line up is one, and the second is two, and the third is three, et cetera. And going down, first line down is negative one, second is negative two, negative three, negative four, et cetera. All right, you can see that the two axes divide the plane into four regions. And these regions are called quadrants. Quadrants. Okay. And it's proper designation to uh, state each quadrant with a Roman numeral. Now, how do you figure out which is quad 1, 2, 3, and 4? All right. Well, if you can get 1 and then understand the direction, you can get 2, 3, and 4. Uh, why is quadrant 1 uh, called quadrant one. Well, quad one is right here. I'm just going to use capital Q, and we use a Roman numeral to designate the quadrant. So quad one is the upper right-hand quadrant right here, right? Quad one is the upper right-hand quadrant. A couple reasons for that. Any, any point in this quadrant has a positive x-coordinate and a positive y-coordinate. We're going to talk about coordinates in a couple minutes. The other aspect to this is that an angle in standard position, you don't need to write this on your notes, but a, a, an angle in standard position opens up with one ray along the positive x-axis and the other ray opens up counterclockwise. That would be approximately, I don't know, maybe a 50 degree angle. Now, if this thing were to open up even more, say to about there, this angle here is, oh, I don't know, maybe about a 110 degree angle. See how we're getting bigger? So we have now crossed into quad two. And again, if you keep opening this angle even larger, this is maybe about a 210 degree angle. And if we come all the way over here, now we're into about a 340 degree angle, about something like that. So it's because of the opening of an angle in standard position and because of the coordinates that we end up naming the quadrants. So the upper right-hand corner is quad one, and we go counterclockwise. Quad two right there, quad three down below here, and quad four over here. Again, let me please tell you, you're supposed to use Roman numerals. So use the proper Roman numerals when doing your quadrants, okay? Roman numerals. All right, down below is a, also a coordinate system. You'll find this on maps, and you can see here we have a map of Spain. And uh, when I was in the Navy, I was in the Mediterranean, my last med cruise, and we went to Cartagena, Spain. And you might say, where in the world is Cartagena? Well, it's not so hard if I tell you the coordinates. So if you'll go to H8, H8, and so with coordinates, you should say, okay, I'm going down the H row, and I'm going 
in the eight row and where they intersect right there at Cartagena, right? Okay, well, you know, a grid system's okay for maps, but, you know, there's a whole lot of space in this square, and Cartagena is just going to be somewhere within that square. For our coordinate system, we need to be more precise. We need to be a lot more precise. And because of that, our numbers are, across, of course, right on the lines. So again, if I were to come up here and put some numbers in, this would be 1, 2 would be right on that line, 3, 4, 5, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, etc. I'll put a few y values in, 1, 2, 3, 4 going up. Notice the numbers are right on the lines. Okay, it's right on the line where the coordinate is, etc. Okay? All right, so number three, points are located in the plane by a, a pair of ordered coordinates. Coordinates. Ordered means there's an order. The first one is a specific one, and the second one is a specific one. And so A down below, the first coordinate is always the X coordinate. That's the order. First coordinate is always the X coordinate. All right, you got to have X's and Y's. X comes before Y in the alphabet. That should be easy to remember. The X coordinate always comes first. Now, there's a name for each X coordinate. It's called the abscissa. A, B, S, C, I, S, S, A. A, B, S, C, I, S, S, A, the abscissa. All right, I didn't name it. That's just the way it is. All right, and then the second coordinate is always the Y coordinate the y coordinate and uh, each y coordinate is also called an ordinate just get rid of the co from coordinate and you have ordinate o r d i n a t e the ordinate now it's also got another name you could call it the ordinate or you could call it the image and you'll hear it called both the ordinate or the image okay so let's take a look here at the Lower portion, and we're just about done today. Again, pretty quick lesson today. Okay, number four. Um, I'm sorry. Let's uh, finish off C there. And let me go back here a little bit. And the point with coordinates 0, 0. Again, the X is first, right? And the Y is second. Is Paul D. And do you know? Uh, you got to think back to Genesis and beginnings. It's called the origin. O-R-I-G-I-N. The origin. And again, that's the zero, zero point right there where the axes intersect, the origin. Okay? All right, let's go below now and see if we can locate these points. So it says locate each point in the Cartesian plane above. You're going to do it above. I have mine to the right so you can visually see it. You're going to go up to the Cartesian plane above and label the point with its letter. So A, point A, 1, 3. Okay, so pause this if you want to do them on your own, and then I'm going to show you the solutions. Okay, the point one three, I have to go one to the right for the x-axis, and then I have to go up to three on the y, and that point is right there, and I'm going to label it with point A. Okay, one to the right and up three. Point B, negative three two. All right, I'm going to do this one in blue. I'm going to go three to the left. You always do the X first. One, two, three to negative three, right? And then I have to go up to positive two. And point B is going to be right there. Again, you're doing yours up above on the coordinate plane I supplied. And then the last one here, I'll do in green. Point C, zero, negative four. Okay, don't go left or right at all. 0 for an x and go down to negative 4. And that point would be right there, and that's point C. Okay? Pretty simplistic, not very hard. Uh, not a whole lot to that. Okay, so 5, give the coordinates of each point and its quadrant or axis. Give the coordinates of each point and its quadrant or axis. Okay. Pretty easy. Uh, if you'll notice by the format up above, if you'll look up here, 
every one of my sets of coordinates are in parentheses. Don't forget the parentheses, right? The coordinates of points go in parentheses. So point number one or point K. So again, you're going to figure out the X value. And if, you're, if your axes are numbered like they are up above, that's pretty easy. And so you can use the numbers. I have to count one, two, three left, one, two, three, four up. So that was a negative three, four for point K, right? The X coordinate down here was negative three and the Y coordinate up here was a four, right? Always the X left, right first, the horizontal, then the vertical. Okay, point L, point L. One, two, three, four, five, negative five along the x axis and zero along the y. So negative five, zero. All right, let's do point P. Point P, negative one to the left and one, two, three, four, negative four down. So negative one, negative four. And again, you're in parentheses. And finally, point Q. So we are one, two, three, four, five for an x coordinate and negative one for a y, five, negative one. Okay, last thing we want to do is designate the coordinate or axis. I'm sorry, the quadrant or axis. So you look up at point K and what quadrant is that? And hopefully you're going to say quad two, Roman numerals. Roman numerals. Okay, uh, what else? Point L? Point L, I would say it this way. I would say the negative x-axis. The negative x-axis. It's the x-axis, but let's be a little more specific. It's the negative x-axis. It's not in a quadrant. The axes aren't in quadrants. It's along the negative x-axis. All right, the point negative 1... Negative four point P that's in quad three. And finally point Q is in quad four. Okay, that's it. Just an introduction really to coordinate planes. And uh, don't forget some of the terminology. So let me go back here. Coordinate plane is also called a Cartesian plane. Don't forget the quadrants are with Roman numerals. The origin is the zero, zero point. Don't forget that. And then remember, each X is an abscissa and each Y is an ornament or image. So let me come back down here. If you look at number four again, take a look at number four. The one is an abscissa. The negative three is an abscissa. The zero is an abscissa. All those are abscissas. And then here, the three is an ordinate or image the two is an ordinate or image and the negative four is an ordinate or image the x's are abscissas the y's are ordinates or images all right that's the lesson hope you have a great night